Renick Brian here. Quick video. This will make anybody who loves uh, vintage TVs probably cry. I'm watching American Restoration. As you can see right there, I've queued it up on my PVR. What they end up doing in the end looks pretty cool, but I feel they should have restored this item to its original glory. Let's watch. I'm School. But sometimes we get to put a modern twist on old items. And those projects always pose unique challenges. Plus, they're super fun. Rick. Yeah. The customer's here with an old TV. Oh, hey. Sit right there. Hey, huh? Hey. I'm Rick. Good Hi, night, Chris. This is cool. This is a Philco Predicta. It's one of the rarest television sets in the world. It was also known as a Danish modern. I'm here at Rick's Restoration today to get my Philco Predicta TV restored. This is futuristic in its day. Yeah. You know that, right? It was a big deal. Yeah, it was a big one. Yeah, I used to call it the rocket. The rocket. Yeah, yeah, because they look like a rocket. So the way this would usually sit, I mean, this would sit up here like this. Right. Just like that. And then the whole family would watch TV from there. <laughs> you know? This predicted TV is bringing back some memories of television back in the day. Instead of cable or satellite, TVs had rabbit ear antennas. There were only a handful of channels to watch, and remote controls were still laboratory equipment. It also brought um, one of the original ads here for Philco. Very cool. I see stuff like this and think about commercials mm -hmm. that were on TV. All these real cool little cartoon ads. I mean, this brings back such cool memories. That's a question I had is about how much this was back in the day. I knew it was for wealthier people. And um, this one here is 259 You can figure back in 58 That's an expensive piece of equipment. So do you collect? Or you... Yeah, I do. We do. I do collect them. Yeah. The reason why I really want to get this restored is after 40 years, I finally got the chance to be in business with my father. That's awesome. We started a, a TV technology company, which takes television and makes it interactive. So what I'd like to do is take this old rare TV and modernize it. It's, it's really, we're just going to be showing a corporate reel on it. Okay, what do you want? Okay, I'm going to pause it now and we'll fast forward to the end to show you what they actually did to the TV. I may stop in the middle, show you a clip of how they're how they're doing it i find this show they don't show nearly as much as they used to considering when the show first came out they used to show pretty much every single detail of every project but now it's not as much they show just basically before a little bit in the middle of when they're doing the project and then the, the final outcome so my personal opinion is they should have restored it back to its original glory who cares that it's black and white that would have looked cool. So let me fast forward it. I don't feel like doing any editing. As you can see, it's uh, quarter to 3 a.m. Um, yeah. So. so I like. You want that? We recently. On the width. From make a flat. I thought about how to mount it. Hey, Kyle. All right. All right. I just got this flat screen that's going to go in the Predicta TV. Yep. A flat screen. You can actually see the original picture tube is sitting there. I wonder, this is what probably a lot of the vintage TV guys will be wondering, what happened to the parts? So I imagine those parts are extremely valuable and next to impossible to come by, especially considering what this TV is. What I thought about doing was... Make a bracket here to where this fits here. So you go like this. Right there. As you can see, the original picture tube looks fairly intact still. It was challenging making something old work with new technology. So fitting the new screen into the old housing and making sure that it doesn't fall back has to be my main focus right now. Now what I need you to do is have Dave make a... So as you can see, it's actually a pretty cool idea. But I, like I said, they should have restored it. Let me fast forward to the end to the reveal. I do apologize about having uh, no editing, as you can see what time it was. And uh, check out this episode for yourself. Uh, it most likely will be on tomorrow, Thursday evening, on one of the channels. This is uh, History Network for me. installing all the electronics in the wood cabin. Once that's done, we've got to get it all together because the customer's going to be here any minute now. Rick, Chris and his dad's here. Oh, hey, Chris. Good to see you, Rick.
Good to see you. I'd like to introduce you to my dad, Kerry. Kerry, good to meet you. Nice to meet you. As you remember, last time I was here, what I dropped off was a surprise for your store. Yeah. For my dad. Yeah, well, I'm hoping it's going to be a big surprise for you, and I hope you love it. So, uh, you ready to go see it? I'm excited. All right, this is going to be cool. This is going to be really cool. Come on, it's over here. Hi. I wanted to get the television restored for my dad because we started a TV technology company together. And it's really a testament to a father-son relationship and a business. So, Kerry, do you have any idea what it is? I have no idea what's behind there. Okay. Here we go. One, two, three. <laughs> Holy oh, wow. oh. <laughs> Check that out. I can't that is, believe it. That is fantastic. Wonderful. That's awesome. When I first saw the Predicted TV, I was just absolutely blown away. i got to tell you, Richard did a fantastic job. It, it, it looked better than new. We've watched science fiction television since the 1950s. Right. It's great to have a memory like this brought back to life. Yeah. I'm just amazed that you found one that, that you could restore. Oh, it was rough. I bet you it was not much to it. It was broke. <laughs> it didn't work. I believe when they say it was broken, most likely it was caps, uh, most likely the tubes. I imagine it would have worked if they would have looked into it and uh, would have did some research on it. Or would have sent it to one of the many YouTubers that have shops out there who specialize in restoring these TVs. There was nothing on it that didn't get touched, bottom line. When you brought it in, the wood was, it looked like it was painted, to be quite honest. Robert had to strip it, sand it all down, and uh, he went and stained all that and then clear coated it. And then on the, on the front cloth, this has all been redone. Uh, we found the same matching cloth, which was pretty cool. I was worried that we weren't going to find that. This was gorgeous and a beautiful restoration job. I'm thrilled. Thanks. It, it, what he wanted it to do was show videos, and the only way to do that was to convert it over to, like, a flat screen on the inside so where you could actually see it. So we went and, and made a piece on the inside that's actually round going around the corner, so the flat screen, when you look at it, it's going to look like it did back in the day. Oh, that's fabulous. And it's all incorporated in it to where you don't really see it. You know, like if you stand back, it still looks like an old predictor. Uh -huh. That's awesome. And then the bottom end of it, it had to be converted to where it no longer was a tubes or anything like that. It has to function um, a little bit newer, basically. I mounted the DVD down in here in order to get it in and out. I just noticed something. I don't know if anyone else noticed it. It's actually running a uh, computer monitor. I'm going to back it up and show you. I just noticed that myself now. Where it no longer was a tubes or anything like that. It has to function. Right there. There's a VGA cord. So it's actually running a computer monitor. So it's actually not a TV screen. It's a computer monitor. So they must have an audio amplifier in there. That would uh, explain having uh, four plugs. So you'd have the DVD player, the, the uh, monitor, probably uh, the audio amplifier, and who knows what else is in there. See, that's another thing. They did not explain any of the electronics in the show of what they had to do. When the show first originally came out, they would actually ex explain what, what goes into it to make the project what it is. A little bit newer, basically. I mounted the DVD down in here. In order to get it in and out, I didn't want to yeah, have to do the back. So we just cut the cloth just a little bit, glued it up inside there so you really can't see it. It's all interactive. That was what we were trying to shoot for also. This is a perfect surprise. You know, I really didn't expect this. And I really want to thank you for it. And you too, Rick. <laughs> so uh, tell me what you guys think about this video. Uh, hopefully some of the uh, vintage TV nuts out there do watch this video. I know I'm watching this on a 52-inch uh, Samsung flat screen, but please tell me... Uh, what you guys think about it and uh hey feel free feel free to contact rick's record rick's restoration in vegas and uh do what you need to do like uh like say to them oh how how dare they cut up such a beautiful tv i imagine they're going to get a lot of grief for the vintage tv nuts out there about doing this and hopefully those parts did not go to waste because that uh picture tube did not look destroyed uh, a lot of those internal electronics did not look destroyed. That thing looks like it sat in somebody's closet. It was forgot about until the uh, son on here, uh, the guy on the left, found it and brought it in to get restored. So I imagine uh, it would have been would have been a lot of work, but I imagine that thing would have still worked in its original situ in its original state. 
So please, again, tell me what you guys think, and uh, talk to me later. Please keep it redneck like always, and uh, please subscribe and comment.